Hello everyone, welcome to the Data Dev Site Mini Challenges. First of all, I hope everyone is safe and healthy during this difficult time. Let's talk now about the Data Site Mini Challenges. So you are all muted. If you have any questions during the presentation, things you want clarification on, feel free to use the Q&A box in the WebEx window. Today, for the agenda, we are going to talk about the data devs challenges, and we also are going to introduce you to extensive, oh, just realized I made a mistake, says automation integration, extensibility, and embedding. So the three areas where the challenges are focusing on. So the mini challenges. If you haven't read about it before, it's three months of fun challenges. We have 18 challenges in total for you and different level from easy to moderate and advanced. Every week we are going, every two weeks we are going to publish new set of challenges with these three different categories. So maybe the first two weeks you want to do easy, the next two second weeks you might want to do moderate and try to challenge yourself through these three months as well. The three categories are extensibility, automation integration, and embedding. We are going to announce the categories for every two months. It's going to change and, and talk a little bit more about that. So April 6 at 8 a.m. Pacific time, we are going to publish the first set of challenges. This two first weeks are going to be focused on extensions, extensibilities. Every two weeks, we are changing challenge, set of challenges. That means that you have two weeks to solve the challenges. And we also give you content to solve these challenges. The first week of the challenge, we give you, we have a webinar focused on one of these APIs. For example, the first two weeks are on extensibility. Guess what? You are going to have a webinar on extension API. The next two, two other weeks are going to be on automation and integrations. We are going to deliver a webinar on the REST API and TSC. Once the challenge is done, so after the two weeks, we have a hard two webinars by someone from the community. It can be you on this webinar. Let's say you solve a challenge and you are eager to share your challenge, your results, your solutions with other people in the room. So you can participate and to the hard two webinars to explain to the community how you solve the challenge. What did you do? And share your knowledge with others. Let's look at the agenda. We are going to send you all the links to registered and everything after the webinar. So don't worry if you miss any information and we are going to send you the details, the Webex links. But April 6 a.m., we publish the first set of challenges. So next week on Monday, at the same time when we have this webinar now. And the next day, April 7, at half past eight, we have a webinar on the extension API delivered by Kishia Rose, our developer advocate, advocate focused on extensions, a data workstar, an extension workstar, should I say now. April 19, at 12 a.m., we are going to close the, the set of submission for the first set of challenges. So there's two weeks for you to solve it. At 8 a.m., we are going to release the new set of challenges focused on extension and integrations. And April 21st at eight, half past eight, again, we have a hard two webinars by someone of the community. So why you want to complete these challenges? To win a data dev sticker pack, if you do the level one, to win a data dev exclusive data dev water bottle, or to win a 2020 Data Dev T-shirt and beanie. That's what you win if you complete the challenges. It's, you are going to learn new skills, new APIs, or 
knew how to code if you are basically new. So I'm just wondering on the call, by the way, who is new to coding? Who never did anything with Tableau APIs before? Can you just put in the chat where you are, which level you are? It will be interesting and which level you are thinking about completing on the first two weeks. I see level one, okay. Some beginners that want to learn more about APIs, that's cool. So each level, and don't worry, if, even if you start with level one, maybe on the first two weeks, maybe you are going to be able to do level two the next day, the next two weeks. So challenge yourself. Maybe you think that you are you can do only level one, but the, you are going to gain so much knowledge for during these three months, but maybe level two is going to be accessible, and then why not level three? So how to win? So first of all, you need to be part of a developer program. So I guess everyone on this call is part of a developer program as we send out the invitation only for the developer program members. But if you have any friends, any colleagues that are interested by a set of challenges, ask them to join the developer program first. It's also really important as one of the benefits of a developer program is this free developer site. When you're part of a developer program, you get a free development site where you can learn and test APIs. It's what you're going to use for all these challenges. You don't want to solve the challenges on your production environment for sure. And once you are part of a developer program and you are set with your developer site, you need to validate the challenge. So how to is going to be on the main page with the challenges. Every challenges are going to have different validation steps. So just be careful, watch, at the, look at the documentation, at the page with the challenges, and look at the submission, what you need to submit, validate, validation steps for the challenge. Most of them are going to be sending emails to the developer program for us to check. So I mentioned it, the challenge page. So if you have all information about the data dev challenge, you can go to this URL, and right now you have all the information, the official rules, the agenda for the next days, but no challenges yet. This is where we are going to publish the challenges on Monday. So if you have to bookmark one page and remember one information here, is this URL. You have all the information there. Also important is our Slack channel workspace. So we have a Slack workspace for participant developers that want to exchange and get information about our APIs or use cases. We also created a new Slack channel just for these challenges. This data dev, uh, I think I'm going to mistake, it's not a challenge, is a channel here, but is challenge. But if you type data dev, you will find it in the workspace anyway. So just type data dev in the channel list and you will find this work channel, this group of people, or you already have some people there. And you can also share the, can I get informations and get informations on like the new webinars that we are running, or if you want information about a specific API or you just have a specific questions, but also a great place to get information and meet with other participants and get the data. Now that you know everything about the challenges, let's talk about the tools. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of all the developer tools and platforms, but I'm going to focus in three areas I explained earlier, automation, integration, extensibility, and uh, embedding. So what's the capability of the Tableau developer platform as a whole? Automation integration, if you want to automate task on your Tableau server or Tableau online if you want to create custom workflow and manage Tableau content. Extensibility, if you want to do more with dashboards, you want to extend the capability of your dashboard, only the sky is your limit. Advanced analytics, if you want to integrate Tableau with advanced models, you want to do more with calculated fields and you want to integrate use Python script and R script. Embedding, if you want to embed Tableau in other application. If your main application is not your Tableau dashboard, 
but you want your Tableau dashboard in your main application. Data connectivity. If you want to connect to data that are not currently supported by Tableau and via connector, custom connectors or creating creation of extracts. Let's talk about extensibility. Two APIs to extend the capability of, dash, of your dashboard. The JavaScript API and extension API. The JavaScript API lets you display and interact visual, with visualization inside your application. While the extension API enable Tableau user to interact and integrate with data from other applications directly into your Tableau dashboards. The differences between JavaScript and extension API is what is your main application. Think that way. What is your first application? Is it your dashboards or is it your website, for example? If your website is your main application and you want to bring the value, the power of Tableau into your application, then JavaScript API is used. Extension API is when Tableau, the dashboards, is your main application, but you want to bring other applications directly into your dashboards. For the JavaScript API, you need a web page. You're going to embed Tableau in the web page. An extension API, you can use extensions directly in desktop, server, or online. JavaScript API is a custom build for each embedding scenario, each portal or application you have. My extension can be made as reusable. You can use it in different dashboards with different data, both required JavaScript skills. Two examples with build with a JavaScript API and one with an extension API. On the left, we can see a simple portal with a dashboard embedded in it. On the right, we can see a Tableau dashboard, but we can see on the bottom right a radar chart that might be challenging to do in Tableau, not in Show Me. And someone built an extension to build this radar chart in a few clicks. How to get started with a JavaScript API? First of all, you need your JavaScript API library in your web applications to benefit of all the value of the JavaScript API. You need to add HTML elements into your web applications and is where you are going to position your views. You are going to initialize the APIs saying, hi, I want to use the API and use any API methods that you want in the visualizations to initialize it. Then you can call the function to initialize and display the visualization you picked. For the extension API, you need also to create a HTML for your web applications, use the extension API library and initialize it, and use the API to write codes to interact with any elements from your dashboard and other applications. And you need to create a manifest file, so an XML file, file that is pointing to your web application. Then you can drag and drop this manifest file directly into your dashboard. Don't worry if it's too complicated and if you are just starting. That's just to give you the step if you want to get started tomorrow. We are going to have in-deep webinars, so don't worry if it doesn't make sense right now. I'm going to send you the slide as well, so you can maybe look at it with the documentation on the side, don't worry. Automation and integrations. If you want to automate tasks, to do tasks and create custom workflow, manage and manage Tableau content. The most popular one, the REST API, programmatic access to work with anything you see on the Tableau server, UI almost, or Tableau online. Talk about the three P's. Provisioning, permissions, and publishing. Various use cases can be solved with the REST API. 
If you are a Tableau Server admin, for example, you might want to use the REST API to automate the creations of new users. If a new employee is joining a new company, are you going to create manually a user on Tableau Server or Tableau Online? No, you can use the REST API to automate this user creations on Tableau Server and as assign him or her license. Again, if you want to start more with the REST API, you need to authenticate, specify, specify which resource you want to get access to. You want to pick which action you want. So if you want to get the data, for example, or to get the list of users, and then make the request and process the data. You might think that this slide is really similar to the REST API slide. If yes, thank you for following. But yes, it's really similar it's because TSC, Tableau Server Clients, is a Python library for the Tableau Server REST API. So if you are a Python user, you might just want to use TSC instead of the REST API. Hyper API um, is used to create hyper files, so extract, and insert, delete, and read data from those files. And the animation was not done, but had some suspense to the presentation. So if you want to do custom ETLs process with integration with Tableau, for example, um, let's say that you want to create an extract only when the data is actually ready. You want to trigger this extract. So it's why you will use the Hyper API to automatically generate this Hyper file, this extract, once the data is ready and available for you. If you want to start tomorrow with the Hyper API, you need to import the Hyper API library, start the Hyper API process, open the connection with Hyper file, and then you can create tables, insert, delete, update, and read data from them. Don't forget to close the connections before opening the Hyper extract. Webbooks. Allow other services to respond to events that are happening on Tableau Server or online. Think about notifications. If you're a Tableau server admin and you only use Slack, you can set up a webbook that is sending a Slack messages every time a new workbook is published or every time an extract is filing. So, is how you want to get started with uh, webbooks. So, again, is authenticate. You need to authenticate. So it's the same way that you are going to use the same way, the same methods that you use for the REST API. Then you can create a webbook and choose the event. So the event is webbook created, webbook fail, uh, extract failing, for example. And you have to also set up a service to receive the event. Where are you going to send the event, which is receptioning the day, the day events? Metadata, metadata API. The admin only first GraphQL API, the first GraphQL API that all create resources on Tableau Server and how they relate to each other. I'd like to explain the metadata API, thinking about the messy family. You have your uncle, you have your aunt, you have your grandmother, your sister. They are all related to each other. It's the same with uh, Tableau Server, Tableau Online. When we think about all the assets, on Tableau Server or Tableau Online. What do we have today? We have workbook, data sources, web flows. So all these resources, assets, are related to each other in a certain way. And how you can understand how they are related to each other, you can use the graph, the metadata API. So if you're a Tableau Server admin and you want to check if you have any dependency for this data source that you are trying to delete. Is it a workbook created with this data source? If I delete this data source, is it going to break the most important dashboard on the Tableau server? I just want to check it before actually deleting it. So if you're on Tableau server, you need to enable metadata, the metadata API. For the challenges, you are going to, to use Tableau online, so don't worry, you don't have to enable this step is done. You have to sign in using the REST API. And 
specify your endpoint. So basically it's the server name. So it's going to be Tableau Online, the URL of Tableau Online slash API slash metadata slash GraphQL. And then you define your query, which information you want, which assets you want, and how they're related to each other. That's it for automation and integration. Embedding. Embed Tableau content in other applications. We already mentioned the JavaScript API. This is another example of a dashboard embedded in portals. And by the two arrows on the side, it's just explaining that you can have with the JavaScript API a two-way communications. You can read information and get actions from the application to your dashboards, but also from your dashboard to the application itself. You can also use the REST API. Once you embed Tableau you, on your portals, you might have a lot of users, and each user has different permissions. Here, all the terminals you see on these portals is displayed based on the users that is connected to the portal. So the user can see only the information they have information, permissions for. Another API is as data embedded iframe. You might all know about as data. As data allows you to ask questions directly to your data. What are my cells in 2019? How much wine do I have in France, for example? Just saying, I don't know what you say about wine. But you can, with the as data embedded iframe, ask questions, or your user can ask questions to your data directly from your website. If they are missing an information, why not ask use as data to answer the questions directly from your application? So that's it for me. I want to say good luck. If you have any questions, we are going to have uh, with some time now. We have approximately eight minutes for Q&A. If you have any questions, feel free to also email us and Slack us. We will be happy to answer any questions that you might have. One information to remember, this URL, where we are publishing the agenda for the next days. We are going to publish the new set of challenges. So every information about the challenges are going to be on that page. Now we are going to take some questions. What if you didn't create your site yet? You are part of a developer program, but you don't have a site. I can show you quickly where to go to get your site. Let me close that. So you can go to tableau.com slash developer slash get site. is where you get your free developer site. Just have to fill out the form or use your username and password. Yes, we are going to send out the recording and the slide after this meeting. So stay tuned in for the slide. We are also going to post it on Slack. Let me post the link of Slack in the chat so you can directly click on it. It's a great place to get information as well. Posting it on, on the chat if you want to join the Slack channel. Perfect. Um, some questions. Which version of Tableau is on the pre release on the, I just say the answer, on the dev site? So it's the last pre release version. So it's also a great place if you want to get started with APIs that hasn't been released in beta or in pre release you can use this dev site in the future also to test these new APIs and maybe new endpoints, new features. I think that's it for the questions. 
um, if you have any questions, feel free to Slack us or email us in the future. I'm just going to pull the side, slide again. So you can email us at developerprogram.com. And feel free to invite your friends, your colleagues. I know some people are actually doing the challenges internally. So they are created, they created a group internally to solve the challenges there and work as a team as well. Feel free to do that as well. It's a great place as well to challenge your colleagues. Be I'm going to solve challenge level two. Are you going to do it as well? Let's see who is first. So that's it for me. Enjoy the rest of your day and stay healthy, everyone. Bye-bye.